as we've been reporting on Nigeria, Bolia, Bolo Tinuba, the new president-elect after last weekend's elections, it's been controversial. The opposition say there was vote rigging. Let's get a sense of how this is being seen around the world. Our press reviewer, Diptika Laurent, is with us to take us through. Good morning, Diptika. Good morning, Gavin. Well, the Nigerian Electoral Commission has indeed declared 70-year-old Bola Tinubu the new president-elect. He, like the outgoing president, Mohamedou Buhari, uh, is from the same uh, ruling party. That's uh, the focus of the Lagos-based newspaper Vanguard today. They're uh, go, uh, announcing this news on its website. Now, the main uh, opposition parties have, of course, slammed uh, Saturday's election as a sham, accusing authorities of vote rigging and corruption and demanding uh, re-election. Now, Nigerians, in this, at least according to this opinion piece from that same paper, Vanguard, uh, this writer says Nigerians are already impacted by uh, the cash crunch and fuel scar scarcity. Now they contend with having uh, been deprived of their vote to write, at least possibly. It's really inviting more doom upon this nation. Beware the stolen mandate, this writer says, for the Vanguard. I think it's going to be interesting where this goes next, given that the, there's such a big vote rigging allegations here. And I, I'm right to say, Deep T, that one of the most famous Nigerian authors has also been taking a poke at what's been going on through the press. Indeed, she's uh, actually written a, a tribune for the New York Times today, Gavin uh, Chimamanda Gozi Adichie. She's, of course, a noted Nigerian author. Uh, well, she writes in this article for the New York Times today that uh, electoral authorities in Nigeria had promised that new technology would allow votes to be immediately uploaded to a secure uh, central portal. Uh, instead, Saturday's election was marred by violence and beatings. Uh, she reminds us that Nigeria, Africa's most populist democracy is in a fragile state, but she says in this ar uh, article uh, that uh, she really urges Joe Biden to stand behind the Nigerian people and to support election, uh, electoral transparency, if not for the fact, she says, tongue-in-cheek, to avoid waves of Nigerian refugees fleeing an illegitimate government. Now, a lot of the Italian press are focusing on something that it's come up time and time again, but ultimately it's another tragedy at sea. 64 migrants died in this terrible shipwreck off the uh, southern coast. Give us a sense what, what today's uh, Italian press is saying. A lot of grim headlines in the Italian press today, Gavin. Uh, let's show you one of them. This is from La Stampa, which is a Torino-based uh, newspaper. Uh, its headline here reads, uh, a state massacre. So uh, that headline really telling of, of, you know, you get a pulse of, uh, of what the Italian papers are feeling. This paper here saying, uh, going with that picture of uh, the coffins uh, on, the, on its front page. Page. Uh, these were the coffins that were laid in a, a sports hall of those dozens of migrants who died in that shipwreck on the weekend. The ones in white in the foreground here are actually the coffins of children. Uh, indeed, among that death toll were many children. Uh, those on board had come from Syria, Afghanistan, uh, Iran, Pakistan, and Somalia. Yet, for La Repubblica, another Italian paper, they were the people that nobody wanted to save. Uh, so you really see these very heartbreaking headlines in the Italian papers. Uh, uh, this paper also going with that same picture here, also using the word massacre on its front page, Kevin. Now in France, the back pages making the front pages. A day of reckoning, they're calling it, for the head of the French Football Federation resigning or perhaps being forced out. Give us a sense of what the talk is there. Well, he's on the front page of L'Equipe, the French sports paper, not a surprise there. Um, no Legrat, the, the now former president of the French Football Federation, uh, faced claims of harassment and bullying in a feder federation audit. Uh, he also uh, made comments that were deemed disrespectful towards French football great Zinedine Zidane. Uh, it, it, a host of scandals made his position just untenable uh, to the point where he has now resigned. As L'Equipe says, démission accomplie. So it's not mission accomplished, but resignation accomplished. It's a play on words in French. Uh, the paper, though, is stunned that he will still uh, seemingly have a very, uh, uh, a very uh, prosperous career because he'll be continuing to work leading the Paris office of FIFA, thanks to a favor, no doubt, called in to his buddy uh, FIFA chief Gianni Infantino. Uh, uh, Le keeps saying sarcastically in its edition today that uh, Infantino must be a really good friend uh, and, and the paper really regretting what it sees as a step 
back in the past uh, into a past of uh, nepotism. Now, No Legrat uh, in its uh, in L'Equipe actually has given them an interview in which he's denied any allegations of harassment. In in this interview, he announced that he'll also be filing a defamation lawsuit against the Federation audit, but also against the French sports minister, claiming that he is the victim of a well-organized political and media witch hunt. So, uh, Gavin, clearly this ugly chapter in the French fe Football Federation's history is far from over. Well, also from you, this incredible story about this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity in the air on a no-frills, low-cost plane. Is that right? That's right. And it's something that we're not used to hearing about because flying has become such a headache these days, especially on low-cost uh, aircrafts. Well, people across Europe have been treated to a spectacle recently, the Northern Lights. Uh, well, uh, one easy jet pilot was not going to deny this opportunity to his passengers who were flying from the Icelandic capital Reykjavik to Manchester. Uh, passengers on one side of the plane were able to catch the Northern, Northern Lights mid-flight. Uh, the pilot then did a controlled detour. I'm guessing it means it was authorized. He basically did a uh, U-turn mid-air, so passengers on the other side of the plane would also be able to catch the northern lights. Uh, admittedly, the photos that were posted on Twitter are not great. They're a little bit blurry. I guess it's one of those moments where you just had to be there and be in the moment physically. Gavin. Lucky them. Uh, thank you, Deep Tea, for that. I think the best flight I've been on is a glimpse of the Eiffel Tower. Somebody was next to me and I could see their head <laughs> bobbing in between. <laughs>